1206. What's up? There's an unmanned train on the northbound track. It's coming straight at us. Tony Scott, the renowned filmmaker behind Men on Fire, Crimson Tide, and Top Gun continues to push groundbreaking action to the limit. The train is like George, it's like this beast. Sequence was a major sequence in the middle of the movie where this guy's attempting to slow down the triple seven, the runaway train, by trying to trying to block it and stop it. Triple seven bangs him and uh, he derails. There's always ways you can do it with you know special effects, or you can do it with models and stuff. But this, for me, there's nothing like the real thing. As far as I know, no other film has actually filmed in camera a train derailment. This is the camera ship. This is the new ship, yeah? And he'll be filming out of there, and he'll be filming him. He's a grown man with his toys here. He can blow up train. We put an explosive charge on the cables at the same time. We got explosives underneath, so all choreographed. It's all that happened at one moment in time. Well, this is a Tony Scott film. He's a kinetic filmmaker. His movies always have movement. I had cameras on camera cars. I had cameras on the train. I had cameras in the helicopters. I think there's like 22 cameras. People think I'm sort of indulgent, but... Where do you see these sequences that are there? Whoa. Mind blown. Action on the train. Senses and feels when you're inside the real, the real elements. The train is increasing its speed. We're gonna be coming in too hot. Just lost our brakes. Hey! And cut. Good, good, good. This sequence is a major sequence that uh, Joe Pankett and John Frazier choreographed, yeah, and this is, uh, it's a derailment. Pretty much to real trains as you possibly can get. As far as I know, no other film has actually filmed in camera a train derailment. The railroad guys are just, you know, it, it goes completely against everything that they've trained their whole lives, which is we're going to purposely derail a train. You can do it with uh, you know, special effects, or you can do it with models and stuff, but for me, there's nothing like the real thing. I think all my movies reflect what I do. I always put the audience in the seat of the, the real vehicle. The derailment sequence, we actually brought the two locomotives out a month ago, and we've spent four weeks here. It was transported here, it was assembled on the track, and then we had to do some art direction. You know, we had to add all the little pieces that make it look like a locomotive. We made the lower half of the trains back in Hollywood, all the brakes, the mechanics, the engines. We brought those out here to Emporium, Pennsylvania, and we've taken the uh, top of the other trains uh, that they scrapped out out of uh, Ohio, and we've fabricated those to the top of our chassis. What that does is that it basically makes a complete train. In this is an FL-70 Freightliner. We bought a complete truck from a rider lease return, chopped the middle of it, shortened it up 85 inches or so to the proper length for the train. So this only drives on one out of the 12 axles. The real train drives all 12 axles. But all we have to do is maintain speed to get to the event and flip it. It's geared down to do 46.7 on paper right now. We have, uh, we have fiberglass panels that mocked up the uh, chassis of the uh, train. These normally cast iron chassis, and um, we've took and uh, made them um, out of fiberglass to give you that bulk and that shape. Instead of being 400,000 pounds stripped a piece, 800,000 pounds to roll, we're going to be in the neighborhood of 125,000 pounds. So instead of almost a million, we're 125,000 pounds that we got to flip over. Huge advantage. On the day, we'll have our coordinator in this. He'll have three cameras to look at, Ford camera, 
backup cameras were maneuvering, but his third camera will be on the catcher. Here is the catcher. Now this catcher is going to encounter an inch and a half ring of cable that is attached to a dead man perpendicular to the track. And when it catches it, all the spikes are on it, so it, when the train flips around, it doesn't come off. We still got a hold of it. Train runs in, grabs the ring, and as they go through the arc, of course, it starts pulling the train off the track. I believe there's 14 cameras and they're um, placed in various locations. Some of them are operated. A lot of them are going to be lockdown shots because obviously when the train derails and jackknifes and slides, we really you know, they can estimate with engineering and physics how far it's going to go, but you really don't know how far it's going to go. This is Joe Pancake and... Richie Schwab. Richie Schwab. These are the guys that are going to drive the train. That'll teach them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We drew the so, uh, short straw on this one. <laughs> you got the short straw. <laughs> so what's going to happen? Uh, Joe and Richie are going to crank it up to 80. <laughs> Joe and Richie are going to crank it up to speed, it's starting a mile out, yeah? We're a mile back, yes. They're a mile back, and as they come through here, Joe's going to do his thing here, which is hook the eye of the needle here and blow this correct Joe. Cars are going to come off the track and slide, and we try to guesstimate where they're going to end up. Train is moving, Tony. Train is moving. Stand by, you're going to give you the roll. Yeah. I'll give you a visual. Yeah. The visual yeah. will tell us the roll. Right, guys, yeah. we're ready for the queue to roll here. The train is moving. Okay. Brooks, you're going to run with the action. You're going to overtake the action. And I'd be reluctant to try and slow down. It's almost like you're pivoting around. And then in terms of helicopters, it's a similar deal. You're just trying to get the point of impact. Right? You're like that. Alan, you're coming over the top. And we're doing trying to get counter 180 like that once it's happened. Seconds. 20 seconds away. Should we roll now? Yeah. Here we go. Roll. 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 If the camera's not rolling, we're not aborting. Don't even come on the radio. If your camera's not rolling, your camera's not going to be in the movie. We're not aborting this shot. Once the train starts rolling a mile away, where is the point of no If we've rounded that corner, we're not stopping. Stretched every safety thing we had to the max. Yeah, I got out and noticed the cable was a little taut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I tell you what, it worked because we felt that, but we didn't feel that. It's just like we almost well, that's slid the thing to about a when I was looking at it, I thought I saw the arms go up and I'm expecting to see a jerk. And it just it would just it slid to a nice, gentle stop. Yeah. It's almost like why am I standing here? There's two locomotives coming at me. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm watching the six o'clock news here. From the original concept, Tony didn't want the train just to just fall off the tracks. He wanted it to jackknife and slide. So it was like a two-part effect. First of all, I'll get it off the tracks. And then the second part, I'll snatch it and pull it sideways. So for the first part, we build what's called a moment arm here. What you're looking at is a big arm, and it's got a, a nitrogen cylinder on it. 
and we, we put about a thousand pounds of pressure in it. And then when uh, Joe Pancake got to a, a mark, which uh, you saw the big target, he pushed the buttons and he just pushed these down and lifted the train off the tracks. This is the whole key to it right here. This little piece of metal right here pushed against those tracks. If we didn't have this on there, uh, it would it would just it would have slid. We're going to continue this tomorrow. We're going to re-rig the trains, configure them for Tony. So as we time it out with a 777 coming by, we're going to add an explosion to this as well. 